Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, colleagues and everyone else. Welcome to the, uh, this meeting today of Suffolk County Council. Thank you very much indeed for coming. Uh, I would like to remind you, if you could please, to turn off or change to silence any mobile devices that you have. And an audio recording is being made of this meeting and will be made available on the Council's website. Uh, under the Council's protocols, anyone intending to film, record or take photographs at this meeting should have contacted the head of Democratic Services. And indeed, I must inform you that Ben Redsell has given due, due notice of his intention to film this meeting of the Council and take some still photographs. Although the Council has to allow this to happen, I would like to ask if there is anyone present here today who objects to being filmed, who objects to his or her being filmed today, recorded or photographed during this meeting. Sorry. Councillor Ritchie, thank you. Uh, I object to being filmed. Uh, that's du duly noted, so uh, avert it accordingly. Uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you Councillor Ritchie. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Although the Council has to allow filming by members of the public, I would like to ask, uh, is there anybody else who does not want to be filmed here today? Thank you so much. Ah, uh, yes, um, Councillor Beer, thank you. Mr. Mr. Chairman, on a point of clarity, I was under the impression that members of this Council and officers of this Council cannot ask not to be filmed. It's only members of the public speaking, who can ask not to be filmed. Uh, uh, could you just clarify what the situation Indeed, is? Indeed, Councillor Beer, thank you for raising that. I shall check with uh, uh, Mr. Ryder next to me. If they wish to object, then they can do, Councillor Beer. They have every right to object to being filmed. Is that, is that a satisfactory answer? If they, if, they, if they wish to object, they're allowed to uh, raise that objection. Yes, but that means that they can still be filmed, doesn't it not? Um, because the councillor and, and officers of this council um, can't refuse to opt out. This is what I was led to believe. I'd just like it cleared. Thanks, uh, Councillor Beer. Let's, let's get clarification from Mr Ryder. Thank you, Mr Ryder. Thank, thank, thank you, colleagues. Please may I have your attention. Thank you so much. Um, clarification from Mr. Ryder makes it the case that uh, members have every right to object, and if, if they do object and it's noted, then uh, anyone taking the film must not include them in the filming. That, that is the protocol that was agreed by this council, according to what Mr. Ryder tells me. So I would... Uh, I uh, gratefully request that Ben Redsold uh, bears in mind what Councillor Ritchie has said. Uh, and that's the answer, thank you, Councillor Beer. That, that's the answer. They, they have the right to be left out of the film, out of the frame. Thank you so much. Jolly good. Let's move on, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I just finally wanted to say thank you. In, I'm going to allow the recording to go on with the provisos mentioned. And... Uh, that respect is given to the wishes of those persons who have indicated just now that they do not wish to be recorded. Now, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Father Philip Gray, who's come along as a guest from Mendelsham today, and it gives me great pleasure for the thought for the day. Thank you, Father Philip Gray. Thank you. Um, a teacher asked the school children to show falling leaves as a sign of death. A little girl put up her hand and said, I don't want to draw leaves, I'd rather draw apples. 
Why apples, replied the teacher. Because I can draw faces on apples, said the girl. As Remembrance Sunday draws very near, I'm encouraging children at school to imagine a face, not on an apple, but on a candle like this. They will all hold candles like that, and I ask them to imagine a soldier's face on that candle. In our village at Mendelsham, we shall light 24 candles for those who died in World War I, nine who died in World War II, one from the Korean War, and 190 for the Americans from the 34th Bombardment Group who lost their lives from Mendelsham Airfield. And each year, because we have a special service for the children on the 11th, the 11th, the children come to me at the end and say, Father Philip, is that everyone in the whole world who died in the wars? No, I reply, just one. Suffolk village. And the lighting of candles shows how many died in a way that reading a list would not. A pig and a hen were looking at a notice in a restaurant. Ham and eggs. The pig went quite pale. And when the hen asked why he looked so ill, the pig said, your egg is only a token offering. For me, it's a complete sacrifice. The candle is a very powerful symbol of complete sacrifice. It gives of itself as it gives warmth and it gives light. Those who died made that complete sacrifice. Jesus said a man can have no greater love than to lay down his life for his friends. So what about ourselves? We need to make an offering. It will be a token offering compared with their complete sacrifice. When I was an unmarried curate at St Clement Leon C, I received a Valentine card which said, Valentine, I would climb the highest mountain for you. I'd swim the widest ocean for you. I opened that card very enthusiastically. <laughs> Inside it said, I'll see you tonight if it doesn't rain. <laughs> so often I'm afraid our efforts for peace are like that card. Just words. And one person wrote an international prayer for peace that is widely used throughout the world. We use it daily at Mendelsham. And from that prayer used daily, we must promote peace in our lives, in our families in our villages, in our towns, in our places of work. Will it make any difference? Blessed Mother Teresa said, it is only a drop in the ocean, but the ocean is richer for it. You may say I'm asking for the impossible. But I believe there are no impossible situations, only people who make them impossible. No impossible in situations, only people who have become impossible about them. So I urge you today to put a drop in that ocean, and I'm sure it will be the richer for it. So I'm going to conclude with that prayer for peace that's universal. Lead me from death to life, from falsehood to truth. Lead me from despair to hope. From fear to trust, lead me from hate to love, from war to peace. Let peace fill our heart, our world, our universe. Peace, peace, peace. And I'll give the blessing. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. And Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, this day and always. Amen. We go in the peace of Christ. Amen. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Father Gray. Thank you.
Thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen. I now move you on to the next item on the agenda. Thank you. Time to change pledge. As you may be aware, uh, Councillor Mark B, as leader of the Council, and Deborah Cadman, your chief executive, have signed the Time to Change organisational pledge on World Mental Health Day, which was the 10th of October that was just gone. This is a public statement of aspiration that as an organisation, we at Suffolk County Council will tackle mental health stigma and discrimination. The County Council has submitted an action plan to Time to Change, which demonstrates how this pledge will be carried out. I would encourage every colleague, every councillor, who has not already done so, to demonstrate this council's commitment by signing a pledge form of personal intent. Pledge forms can be obtained from councillor services. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, and I look forward to your support in that. May I say that it's been a busy, busy time since the last um, meeting. I've had a great privilege to represent you all at many, many events from Bury to Newmarket to Waveney, all over the place. It's been fantastic. One of the things that sticks out in my mind was to go up to Waveney and to see uh, mainly young people who were graduating in St. Margaret's and to see the uh, optimism that was engendered in them as they look forward to meeting the challenges that the degree had given them in the past and the hope that they had for the future in, in finding useful employment. And I think it's a very optimistic thing when we uh, can see that young people mainly, but there were some older students there, mature students, it was very encouraging to see the, uh, the optimism of the event and to, and to wish them every best, as we do to all graduates from UCS, which is fighting so hard to establish itself and is doing so as the university of our county. As you probably know, it receives its um, accreditation at the moment from the University of East Anglia and, of course, from the University of Essex. But we wish them very well, and they are one of our greatest strategic partners, and, and, they, and they are encouraged by the assistance we give them, and we wish them well. Thank you. I will be holding another quiz, and uh, perhaps colleagues would, in a busy timetable, may find time to be able to come along. It will be on the 2nd of December. It was originally advertised for the 3rd, but that has been re-designated for the 2nd. And the quiz, as you probably know, is in aid of SAFA, which is my chosen charity this year. This will take place at Endeavour House, Russell Road, Ipswich, on Tuesday, 2nd of December. Fantastic if uh, colleagues and chums could come along to that, and I look forward to your support in the normal way. Uh, so I look forward to you lending your support. I am very pleased to announce that I will be hosting the Suffolk County Council Carol Service on Thursday the 11th of December at 6 o'clock in the atrium of Endeavour House. Uh, you'll be happy to learn, I, I feel sure, that music will be provided by the Felix Stowe Salvation Army Band. That's right, John, the good. And the Endeavour House Choir will also be in attendance. In fact, there's a lady in Framlingham there who's retired, but she, she's a, a very stalwart member of that uh, choir, so I look forward to that as well. And they will be singing uh, two Christmas songs during the service. The address will be given by the uh, Bishop of East Anglia, the Right Reverend Alan Hopes. He's a Roman Catholic bishop, good chap, and looking forward very much to seeing him on the day. I do hope you will attend and encourage others to do so. Thank you for your support. I now move on to apologies for absence. Uh, apologies that we have, Mr. Ryder. I have Sarah Adams, Peter Byatt, Richard Smith, and... Tony Brown. Are there any others to add to the list, please? Julian Searle. Councillor Julian Searle. Julian Flood. Julian Flood, thank you. Sarsi Councillor Searle there, yes. <laughs> Anne Gower. Any others, please? Splendid, thank you. Um, Councillor Colin Noble as well. Ah, running late, thank you. Um, I, I haven't any 
change of news to give you reference, our colleague Councillor Byatt, other than to say the situation uh, persists. No other news to report to you. Thank you for Sandy, Sandy for updating me on that, other than that he remains clearly in our, in our thoughts. Yes, Councillor Mrs Barker. I can, up, I can update, councillors. Uh, we had an email from Donna Lee, who's the uh, Democratic Services Officer, about an hour ago, to say he'd had a tent operation. This is Councillor Byatt. But he has come out of ICU in Addenbrooke's. So there's a little glimmer of light there. Obl obliged to you for that information, Councillor Barker. He remains in our thoughts. Thank you. Now move on to item number four, which will be declarations of interest and dispensations. I understand we have had none whatsoever. Thank you very much indeed. I now move you on to item five, minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, agenda item five, as you'll see before you, is indeed the minutes of the meeting held on the 18th of September 2014. Uh, is it the wish of members that I sign these as a correct record of events? Thank you, Mr. Leader. Moved. Seconded. Carried. Anyone against? Nemcon. Done. Thank you so much. I shall be signing those at the end of the meeting, colleagues. Point number six on your agenda, public questions. Uh, we have no questions at this meeting received from members of the public, so I'm going to move you on swiftly to item number seven. In accordance with Rule 3.1 of your Constitution, two motions have been duly received. The motion is printed on page three of your agenda sheet. Motion one as proposed by Councillor David Nettleton regarding voting at scrutiny committee meetings. Uh, Councillor Nettleton, you have up to five minutes to speak. Would you please be prepared to propose the motion? Thank you. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, when a member of the scrutiny committee asks for a vote before recommendations are submitted to Cabinet, that request is granted even if only one member wishes to dissent. Uh, Mr Chairman, I was uh, Chairman of the Overview and Scrutiny Committee at St Edmunds Borough Council for two years, from 2011 to 2013. And uh, during that time, there was a lot of recommendations coming through reports and review groups. And at every meeting, uh, because I was going to Cabinet afterwards to uh, move these and ask Cabinet support, I made sure that the feelings of the members were known. And the only real way to do that is to have a vote, to ask for somebody to propose the recommendation, somebody to second it, and then everybody vote. And then I had the confidence, I had the support of the committee, or in some cases, not the support of all the committee. So I think that should happen here. However, I'm not proposing that today, because I think we need to move this thing gradually. So what I'm suggesting is that we take this small step forward to see how it affects the scrutiny committee going forward. And uh, I'd certainly be happy to... Um, uh, agree that it would go to the Constitution Working Party if necessary. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nettleton. I'm going to call upon Councillor Arira Gaia to second that accordingly. Thank you, Chairman. I just uh, second the uh, just uh, second the motion and, and reserve my right to speak should I be required at the end. Thank you very much indeed. I call upon the leader of the council, Councillor B. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Chairman, and thank you, uh, Councillor Nettleton, for your uh, motion. Um, I, I really um, want to um, pick up the point that you made at the end there, and actually to save uh, Mark Aguirre from having to speak later on, because hopefully we won't have to have a debate on this, and to say that I think this matter should go to the Constitution Working Party for a full discussion, as we do on a number of revisions to the Constitution, and this has become um, very much a general thing that we have done to keep the Constitution relevant and I would welcome you if you would like to come to that meeting to address those points at the meeting so that you can make full use of the opportunity of talking in a much probably calmer environment than a full council meeting about what could be these changes to the scrutiny arrangements. And I think that following that, if there are then any changes that do come forward, it can then come to a full council meeting and then members can then see 
uh, and then hopefully agree, or if they don't agree, then send back for further work any changes that we may make on that matter. So I would like to propose that, and I think that I assume that constitutionally I would have to do this as an amendment, would I, to the uh, motion that's been um, submitted here, but I assume that from the comments that you've made, that if you support that, that would then become the substantive motion. I'm trying not to do the monitoring officer's job for him because he's perfectly capable of doing it himself, but I guess that might be a way forward. So I would move a, um, um, an amendment to your um, uh, proposal to read that um, following the, um, the matter that you've written there, so after the words wishes to dissent, and that this matter be discussed at the next Constitution Working Group and that a report then come back to a future full council meeting. And I so move that amendment. Thank you, Councillor B. Is there a seconder to that? Ah, thank you, Councillor Sandy. Well, thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Yes, I'd be happy to second that. Um, I did actually write out an amendment which was very similar to the amendment that Councillor B has just proposed, so um, I would be happy to second that amendment, yes. If we're content with that, could I put that to a show of hands, if we're content with that? Show of hands, that's, that's, uh, that's accepted. It's accepted. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much indeed. I'm now going to draw your attention to motion number two. This is on page three as well of your agenda. Motion two is by Councillor Bryony Rudkin and relates to children's centres. Councillor Bryony Rudkin, you have five minutes to speak and would you please propose your motion? It's been, it's been, yes, who's speaking? Councillor Gage. Sorry, um, Chairman, I just wish to um, check whether or not I have to declare interest here in that I have a member of my family that works at one of the children's centres, so I just wanted to raise that in case that's something that needs I'll to be... I'll get clarification for you, Councillor Gage. We don't believe, we don't, we don't believe so, Councillor Gage. You're, you're free. It would be a non-pecuniary de declaration. Thank you. Councillor Rudkin. Thank you very much. In proposing this motion, there are two uh, approaches that I want to take to this. Um, we think that uh, what you have proposed, you, the word merger has been used in the consultation documents that have gone out, but I, I think it's quite clear that what's proposed is the closure of certain facilities. You can call it a merger if you like, but if something is not being delivered from a particular location, then it's shut. And we have, uh, the, 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 there are, as I say, two approaches to this. One is, is that uh, in Ipswich in particular, you will be aware that um, some of us accompanied some parents and young children on a, uh, we called it a long toddle, it was more of a long slog and a push up the hill, and I, and I speak as one who didn't actually push a double buggy, but my good friend Kim did. I just walked up the hill alongside the children. And the point that the parents were, and carers were making was that the distance between the, uh, these merged centres was considerable and not one that would be easily undertaken. And indeed, actually, uh, it, I'm looking at Councillor Newman, it wasn't a particularly um, safe or, or pleasant route um, uh, because it involved traffic, but, but that isn't really your problem at this stage here. Um, and it took a long time. It took some 45 minutes or so, which is longer than some of the, uh, the, the figures that I believe that the County Council has, has been giving out about distances, which I also believe are as the crow flies. So short of strapping children to pigs with wings, I'm not quite sure how they were supposed to get there in that distance. So there's a very practical issue about the way in which any kind of merger or closure will affect families. And, uh, and last week, when I did a, a radio interview with Councillor Jones, um, he offered uh, the alternative to Quayside Children's Centre, which, for those of you who don't know, is located down near Suffolk, within the grounds of what you'd call Suffolk College, for those of you who, who are aware of Ipswich, offered the Reg Driver Centre as an alternative. The Reg Driver Centre is a good half an hour's walk away, again, up a hill, so not quite the same degree of slope, but certainly up a hill, and is located in an area where... I can assure you uh, the, the demographics are very different and whilst it's good to offer services around the place, I think what the research, and I will come to the issue of research, what the research has told us so far about the use of children's centres and the success or, or, or not uh, of Sure Start schemes before that is that if those are schemes that are to be uh, accessed by 
families that are most disadvantaged, um, actually the Reg Driver Centre doesn't really fit the model of a location where that service should be delivered. Um, so we have some very practical questions that we want to raise, and I know that my colleague, Councillor Bowl, will tell you of the experience of families living in the, uh, the Witten and White House areas, where the Meredith Children's Centre, when I first moved to Ipswich nearly 20 years ago, that was where I used to go and get, um, uh, I, I can't remember actually, it was a prescription for one of my children, but it was a, a well-known and well-used health centre that was built, I think, around the time that the estate was built, and is much loved and recognised by the community there. So to actually stop delivering services in locations that people are used to using and have uh, recognition and, and, uh, and a credibility with the communities which they serve, I think is a real disappointment. So it brings me to the, to the heart of the argument as to why we think that you should, that you should halt what you are proposing now. Um, and that is, is that you, at the same time as talking about closing centres, merging centres, use whatever words you like, you also appear to be undertaking some kind of research. You've got, had people coming down and talking and looking into the success of the centres, but I'm really not very clear what methodology you appear to be using in doing that. Now, I have, uh, I have the privilege of being able to access um, a university library service at the moment, and I have been looking at the research that's been done into Sure Start and into children's centres. Academic research tends to lag behind the times of it, so if you plug in the word children's centre, you don't find very much, but if you look up Sure Start, you'll find quite a lot of academic articles. And it's very interesting. There's some really uh, thought-provoking stuff about the success. Uh, it, it would be fair to say that opinions were mixed, that's what academic life is about, I think, knocking, uh, knocking each other down sometimes. But there is a body of research out there, and I really can't see how that is being applied in this case. You seem to be running two separate exercises at the same time without actually really considering what the effect is for Suffolk. Now, I've talked about Ipswich. I, I do know, uh, because I think I was the portfolio holder, who set up the first rural shore start in Raiden. And I have reminded you in this chamber before of, uh, um, of the reaction from the local member at the time, because he knew, because he knocked on doors, that that was a service that people in Raiden needed. Um, and I think that what you're doing here is you're not listening to the evidence. You're not listening to what uh, people might tell you about how successful those services are. You're having to make other decisions, or you, you're in the, you've put yourself in the position of making other decisions about closures, and they're not terribly informed. So, perhaps, by way of help, I would like Excuse to Excuse me, Councillor Rudden, could, could you draw your comments to a close, please? I will do. I was going to offer you some uh, suggestions as to what you might do about commissioning further services. I appreciate that commissioning services isn't necessarily the strong point of this administration at the moment, but uh, that's maybe for another time. We do have constructive suggestions, which I won't go through now because I'm running out of time, but we do have constructive suggestions to make to you about what else you might do with those children's centres. So we ask you to call a halt to this now and listen to the evidence. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rudkin. Uh, we now move to the seconder of the motion, please. Councillor Gaylord. Thank you. Um, I feel honoured in standing here today to second this motion. I have worked in the caring professions all my life. I worked as a social worker for 10 years, helping families that are struggling and are in need of support, helping look after children, helping children on the child protection register. I set up two family centres and ran one of them in here in Ipswich. I have a head start on understanding the in-depth issues that are at stake and the effect that these policies have on children, their families and on the frontline staff who are delivering the services here in Suffolk. Quayside Children's Centre is one of the nine centres that this administration is proposing to close. This centre is right in the heart of my division. Over the past few months, I've been talking to families that attend Quayside, and I've met those that used to attend the now-closed Ormston Children's Centre. Over a 1,000 people have signed a petition asking for Suffolk County Council to reconsider the planned closure of Quayside. The signatories on the petition come from all walks of life, including a Director of Social Services for four different local authorities. 
He knows the values of children's centres. I wonder if you do. When you look at the list of the wards in Suffolk, ranked by measures of multiple deprivation, Alexandra is one of the most deprived areas of Suffolk. So under your plan, Quayside Children's Centre, which is in Alexandra Ward, serving some of the most deprived children in Suffolk, is set to close. On the other hand, Debenham's Children's Centre, which is in one of the least deprived areas of Suffolk, is set to remain open. I've asked for an explanation for this on numerous occasions, and I have not yet received an adequate reply. <clears throat> now let me move to the mantra that is trotted out at every opportunity. You say it is not about the buildings, but about the services which will continue to be run from community venues. Community venues that are not fit for purpose. Young families need somewhere safe, secure, friendly and welcoming, and that has been designed with their needs in mind. They need toilets and proper changing facilities, a range of toys, paint and art materials, water, sand, play-doh, clay, somewhere to take your time and reflect, a warm and understanding welcome by staff. When parents are ready, they need other parents to share their experiences of bringing up young children. They need staff who are skilled and who know about child development and the importance of family interactions. Parents need access to information about parenting skills, child development, housing, health and other support services. All of the above are provided at Quayside Children's Centre. This cannot be replicated by providing services in local church halls or at other venues. We need places where parents who feel at risk can talk about very personal issues, feeling confident that someone will not walk in on a private meeting. We need fit for purpose, safe places, places with monitored entries not open to the general public. This cannot be achieved in other venues. The building is an integral part of the service. The building cannot be considered in isolation from the services families need or from the services the council might or might not provide as a result of this consultation. Ormiston Children's Centre was closed nearly six months ago with some of those services being provided at Rose Hill Library. Even the County Council recognised that the toilet at Rose Hill Library was not adequate to meet the needs of young families. Suffolk County Council said they would fix this. Nearly six months later, this has not happened. How many other service points will need alterations such as this? How much will these alterations cost? How many more services are going to be run down by this administration before they dispense with them altogether? I urge you to think about the long-term impact these closures will have and to support this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gaylor. We're now open to uh, the debate, and uh, I have a couple of speakers down. I call upon Councillor Hicks, first of all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I'm sorry, but this motion before us today is clearly poorly thought out, and I would like to explain why to the Chamber. Our staff working in children's centres throughout Suffolk do a great job and are having a real impact on the lives of young children and their families. Now, I have been out and about and met many of these staff, and they are passionate about the work they do, and they want to help and make a difference. We need to allow our children's centre staff to spend their time having an even greater impact, rather than managing buildings that are not fit for purpose. Currently, some of our children's centres' buildings are run on expensive leases and are simply outdated. The rooms are often too small, or they're in some places where there simply just aren't enough rooms, or they're not versatile enough to provide the range of services that staff want to be able to deliver. And in some places, the children's centres are simply in the wrong location 
and do not meet the community demand. As a result of this, we already use multiple venues to provide children's services. These alternative venues are often used as they are much closer to the area of need. Now, we must build on this approach, which is based on the latest best practice. We must not simply take an approach of sticking with the buildings we have, as this motion requests. We must look at making the service more accessible to families by improving and expanding the service with a more integrated service directly to the needs of the community that need it. This motion also talks about stopping further cuts to service. But this review is not about cuts to service, but about finding ways of improving and making a more efficient use of the limited funds to hand. I will certainly vote against this motion, as I believe it is a step backwards and would stop us supporting the communities we serve by keeping open buildings that simply are no longer fit for purpose and would stop us finding ways of improving and delivering a more effective service. I certainly hope you'll join me in defeating this motion. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Bow. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I apologize for not standing, but I, I want to talk about the Meredith Children's Center. Now, I've listened to the argument from a um, colleague across the way, and that Children's Center is one of the best known and most used centers in Ipswich. And it happens to be in the most deprived area of Ipswich, the Whitten and White House area. I've spoken to many of those parents, and those parents have just experienced a cut in bus service, and that bus service would have possibly allowed them to go to the Wellington Center which is overcrowded, as it is now. And so, in addition to making it difficult for parents to get their children to these services, these parents are at a loss as to where they're going to get the support that they need to raise their families in this time of austerity. These people are ones who are actually experiencing the most ridiculous cuts to what they need to live on. And rather than taking away the support, I wish this council would reconsider what they're doing to these deprived families. Take a minute to stop and think, I don't care about the buildings. I really don't care. What I care about is my constituents who are in desperate need of the support that these centers offer. And I realize there's another center that's down the road. It's a very busy road. It could be considered dangerous in crossings. And I worry for the lives of those children and for those parents who are struggling day to day to raise their children in the best way they know how. But sometimes they need help. And closing these centers are not going to allow these parents to get the help they need to raise their children appropriately. These offer a lot of assistance to parents who don't know the answers and the best way to raise their children. I really would urge the council to think a minute. It's not that we're trying to put a stop on things just for no reason. My constituents are shouting out for you to take another look at the Meredith Center and at the Keyside Center because they don't 
think they'll be able to access the same services at the Wellington Center because it is already very full. And that's what they've asked me to bring to you today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Bowl. Councillor Kemp, please. Right, thank you, Chairman. Well, I, I think uh, there is a vast difference between some of these centres. I've listened to what Councillor Hicks said about steps backwards if we impinge upon what is likely to happen. But I would suggest that if you close the centre in Glemsford, that is a step backwards. That centre was constructed only four years ago at a cost of over half a million pounds. In fact, I'm looking at Councillor Newman. He actually came out and opened the centre. Uh, we received, Suffolk received from the government, £370,000 grants towards this centre, which is in the grounds of Glemsford Primary School. We didn't stick a pin in the map, did we? We built it because there was a need. The need was established. Glimpsford is the second most deprived area in the Baber district. We might all look very affluent in the Melford district. There is a thing called rural deprivation. People suffer in rural villages from all sorts of things, bus service, you can name it. But there are no end of social problems within the village of Glemsford. Oh, I just do not understand the economics. It's the economics of madhouse, isn't it, really? You build a thing four years ago for a specific purpose. Are you trying to tell us the need has gone away? Because the need hasn't gone away. It's grown, I can assure you. The problems I'm dealing with in the village of Glemsford. So, for goodness sake... Let's not get over-emotional. This is a purpose-built building to serve a need in a village called Glemps at 3,500 population. The problems have grown. So what is the real economic benefit to close something that serves the public so well? And I honestly ask you to think about these things on the case-by-case -case situation. The people of Glemson are not very happy. They can't understand that we build a purpose-built building to serve a particular purpose. Four years later, we say, oh, well, the problem's gone away. We've got to save some money. Let's close it down. Is that the economics of sense? To me, it doesn't make any sense at all. So I urge you, and I have to compliment Councillor Jones. He's been very good as far as I'm concerned with information. I'm not criticising him personally. I just think you should all have a very close thought and a very close examination from my particular perspective before you think about the closure of the Woodland Centre at Glemson. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kemp. Councillor Guy McGregor, please. Yes, Chairman, thank you. Um, no doubt an element of political opportunism has arisen in proposing this particular motion by the Labour group here, obviously trying to shore up the uh, faltering campaign of their leader in campaigning through the next Member of Parliament for Ipswich. But leave that aside. As someone who, in fact, um, is well versed in the needs of these particular client group, my wife was an active health visitor, and there's no doubt about it, these particular facilities provide a wonderful opportunity and a vital, a vital service to encourage the best practice in bringing up children. Three things I'd like to mention, I think, particularly my own experience of the, uh, uh, the Children's Centre in I. This serves a client group of about 900 children, and though it's a, uh, an area remote from Ipswich, or rather Ipswich is remote from I, uh, it is, does, does a wonderful job in terms of the enthusiasm, what goes on there. I have a list of the things which happen in that particular place over half term. There, there are actually things like bumps and babies on Monday. Children's Health Clinic on Tuesday drop in and play a whole range of things, make life better and easier and more productive for the, uh, for the parents and for their children. Now, in terms of this particular motion, of course, this is the consultation process. We're going out to consult. And no doubt about it, the Cabinet will consider the matter in December. Now, that is the time, it seems to me, to make the individual cases, to, to, to tug at the heartstrings, to make it clear to us these are vital services, and your own particular ones should, in fact, be spared the axe. 
that's fine. But what you're asking us here to do today is contrary to that. Stop everything. Don't look at it. Regardless, is it good? Is it doing a right job? No. Typical Labour way of doing things. Regardless, look at the buildings, look at the schemes, don't look at the actual service being delivered. And so, as far as I'm concerned, the Labour group have an opportunity to debate the matter at the Cabinet in December. Call it in if they want to. Look at it again. Plenty of opportunities. But here it's pure, pure political opportunism. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you, Councillor McGregor. Councillor Patricia O'Brien, please. Thank you. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, I was portfolio holder for children, um, children and young people services in 2006 when children's centres were introduced. Eight years later, times and economic circumstances have changed, and it's both prudent and good practice, I believe, to evaluate the present provision. A review has shown that the numbers using the children's centres is low and often the range of services is limited. Thus, the option of merging with a well-provisioned and popular children's centre close by or relocating to an existing county building, such as a library, is recommended. I believe this is an efficient and sensible approach that will enable this council to maintain early years provision. I fully support a scaling down of some children's centres and believe it damaging to maintain the present levels when the evidence plainly calls for change in order to better deliver the service. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor O'Brien. Councillor Cook, please. Thank you. This is a quote from a parent who filled in the petition to save Quayside Children's Centre, which I wanted to share with you today. I've used the services at Quayside for almost three years. It was a lifeline at a difficult time. I'm not sure I would have made it to a centre much further away. It has enabled myself and my partner to access services and support that we would have been unaware of without the staff at Quayside. Support that has got us through illness and significant challenges, without which our ability to care for our daughter would have been impacted. It provides the bridge between families and the services that they may need to access. How else can early intervention, inter uh, intervention occur? Quayside is a special environment. It brings together the diverse communities in the area, giving children the opportunity to mix from the youngest age. I've been to the other children's centres in Ipswich, but Quayside is the most diverse, providing services for all age groups and backgrounds. It provides information and early years educational opportunities across the board. I can't recommend it enough and would be angry and saddened if it were to close. Thank you. Councillor Otten, please. Uh, thank you very much. Um, mention was uh, just spoken of, of the consultation, and I have actually raised this with the uh, portfolio holder, the Cabinet member. I am concerned that the consultation, I believe, had some flaws in that um, there were only two categories whereby somebody could respond, A, a professional, or B, a member of staff and therefore I think a lot of people felt excluded from taking part in the consultation. On the issue I totally understand why the members from Ipswich would actually specify the particular children's centres in their location but I'm particularly concerned about those in rural areas where of course we have limited and in many cases absolutely no public transport of anything at all. Um, the concerns that you put forward, obviously, are about the buildings, um, but in many cases, they may well be inadequate, but it's a fact is that there are people there that are qualified to help and advise fathers, mothers, carers. To suggest that we could amalgamate with a library, I actually believe this would not at all be an adequate provision. How can you expect somebody that is a qualified librarian to actually need to give advice to somebody who may need, on that particular day, emergency advice about where to go, what provision, where, where, where can they get the help that they need? I don't believe that that can work. I'm also particularly concerned that certainly where my own um, children's centre 
deals with families from the armed forces. These are parents who have maybe arrived in Suffolk miles away from their own families, miles away from their own family support. They have nobody other than those well-qualified children's centre managers to help them with issues that may be, and I hate to say this, sometimes the armed forces are not giving the help that they need. It is particularly difficult if you are expecting people to travel from one part of a rural area to another. But also, in many respects, some of the children's centres are actually part of the community in which they are. And therefore, to take them away, I actually think, will result in a loss, not just to the people who wish to use the community and the children's centre, but will lose part of their community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Gage. Thank you. Um, I want to come back and draw the um, Chamber's attention back to the reason why this motion is actually valid now and the reason why we've brought it to this meeting. The Children's Centre consultation, as we've just heard from others on this side, um, is fundamentally flawed and, as it stands, in my opinion, is null and void. Savings for the County Council are being suggested at the expense of young families without having established what this saving to the, for the Council will cost others. Having to pay travel costs, as we've heard, if indeed there are any public transport that you can use in rural Suffolk, um, to go to other centres um, is going to be costly. So, for example, the closure of the Hadley Children's Centre will cost a family an average of £5 each way to get to East Burgold. Can they afford that? Do you know if they can afford that? Your research has, doesn't tell us. For those without the means to travel, and as I've said, without public transport, they won't be able to get there. And you can replicate that across all of rural Suffolk. But have you found out whether or not that's achievable? I don't think so. Savings are based on the premise that centres due to close are not currently fully used. Well, is it any wonder, given what we've heard so far? At some centres, staff have already been cut. We have already heard of sessions being cancelled. Mums have reported to councillors on this side of the chamber that going to their centres and arriving at the usual time and day they would expect to be able to access services, they find a little sign at the window saying the centre's closed. Is it any wonder then that they report to us that they're not being attended? For some in this chamber, this story is a little bit deja vu. In 2010, this council suggested that all of Suffolk school crossing patrols could be cut. At the same time, by stealth, they were blocking the recruitment of any new school crossing patrols. So, in fact, Point they were order, already Mr. closing. Point of order, Mr. By stealth, Point of order. Uh, a much loved. Excuse, excuse me one second, Councillor Gage. Uh, our colleague, Councillor McGregor, is raising a point of order, which I'll take. Thank you. You weren't a member of this council when that proposal took place, and that was not the proposal. That may or may not be a material fact. I don't think it may be a point of order, though. Well, if I may, Chairman, I'm perhaps in a better position than some elected for the first time here at Suffolk County Council. I was then a highways officer at Suffolk County Council <laughs> and was a first-hand experience of what was going on. Can I continue? By stealth, in 2010, a much-loved necessary service was being cut and why to save £200,000? And here we are again, four years later. And again, this council, on the back of a flawed consultation, is already discontinuing children's centres across Suffolk by stealth. As I say, this, this consultation is null and void with non-existent research into the true impact on the most vulnerable in Suffolk. Null and void with an intention to close already... Uh, intention to close already taking place with the removal of staff and services. 
null and void as it fails to recognise that in trying to save the county council money, it is simply transferring the cost to the most at need to seek support elsewhere. Mm. Councillor Jones. Whilst I'm sure some might welcome the, in the introduction of a new wine bar, what you should be concentrating on is undertaking real community-based research and consultation on what people want and not repeat the mistakes made in 2010 and 2011 in making cuts by stealth that the Suffolk communities will not support and we will all have to pay the price for later. For these reasons, Chairman, I support the motion. Thank you very much indeed. Councillor Ladd. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I actually wasn't going to speak on this uh, topic this afternoon, but I think Councillor Rudkin has uh, mentioned the Raiden Centre, which is the first centre to open, as she said. Uh, I thought I'd like to sort of uh, fill members in as what's happened, because during the consultation period, uh, you can either take that as it is, or you actually can try and do something. So the consultation period for me allowed me to engage with the community, allowed me to talk to the centre manager, and actually out of that, what we've got is something which I think will be much better for the community of Raiden. And that is that it will be going, hopefully, into the Healthy Living Centre. So once you get your head round, Chairman, this is about services and not about premises. And personally, I prefer money to go into services and not into outdated old premises and maintenance. You can actually try and work this because it is about, I think, working to a different model. Very similar to the library situation a few years ago, everyone arms in horror about what's happening with the libraries. I can say that our library in my division, has gone from strength to strength because of that. And simply, that's because of community involvement. And the community are involved in that, and they are controlling it now, and it's not controlled by the County Council. So, Councillor Rudkin, safe and comfort, if you like, that your first children's centre in Raiden, that service will be continuing in a far better premises for all than it's currently in. 